Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's video season ticket. Let us apologize at the head of the tape for the one-day delay in receiving this week's tapes. Good old American Airlines lost the tapes between Cedar Rapids and our edit suite, so they caused us 24 hours. Now let's get to the business at hand as Iowa tries to finish the season strong and win their third game in a row. It is a windy Northwestern University field that the Hawkeyes begin play on. Winds 25 to 36 miles an hour. The Hawks begin play with the wind. On the first play, Cedric Shaw only gains three. Game's gonna start a little slow as three plays later, Nick Gallery, the freshman, has to punt the football, 59-yard punt, but the Achilles heel of the Hawkeyes this year, their specialty coverage teams allows a 32-yard return. 12.57 left to go in the first quarter, Northwestern first and 10 at the 43. Lundy goes left, but Mike Wells and Matt Hilliard stop him for a gain of two. Two plays later, that brought on a punting situation for Northwestern. They had to kick into the win. It was only a 32-yard punt, and the Hawkeyes take over at the 16. Let's go to the second play of that drive. Paul Burmeister to Scott Slutsker, and it is complete for a 25-yard gain. However, there was a penalty against Iowa. That knocked off 15 yards, but it was a first down. Three plays later, third and nine from the 27. Paul Burmeister's in trouble. He loses 14 as Shine knocks him down. So that brought on Nick Gallery, and he hits a 49-yard punt that carries inside Northwestern territory. 9.07 left to go in the first quarter. First and 10 from the 38. Sure at quarterback for Northwestern, and that was an ugly pass, but it was complete. Daly and Larry Blue who also had a great game, stopped him after a gain of eight. Second and two, Lundy tries the left side, but Hilliard will have none of that, stops him after a short gain. Three plays later, it is third and seven from the 48. Sure, just a little bit short on the pass, so it's incomplete, and that sets up another punting situation. Fourth and seven, Paul Burton hits it. Pretty good punt into that win, takes a good hop for Northwestern, and it's killed at the Hawkeye seven. Let's go to second and seven. Ryan Terry tries the right side. He picks up four. By the way, Iowa only had seven yards rushing in the first half. That's right, seven yards rushing. That was third and three, and Ryan Terry gets no gain. So, once again, that brings on a punting situation. Gallery comes in. And look at this boomer, 68 yards over the Northwestern man's head. He takes it at the 18. And once again, back up field over the 45 inside Iowa territory, 34-yard return. Let's go to second and nine. Sure, wants to throw. He does. He finds Gissendander. Good for a gain of 24. Scott Plate on the tackle. Two plays later, second and eight. Robinson tries the middle. Parker Wildman. Stops him after a gain of one. Two plays later, Northwestern tries the field goal. It is up and good. That was a 28-yard drive in six plays, and Northwestern's on top, three to nothing. Wildcats kick off into that heavy, heavy wind. Ryan Terry tries to grab the handle, comes up with it, and he's going to be hogtied at about the 16-yard line. 2.38 left to go in the first quarter. First and 10 from that point. Burmeister wants to throw, and he finds Anthony Dean all alone. He breaks inside the 50 and gains 39. First and 10, ball at the 45. Burmeister to Slutsker. He's hit. He fumbles. It's recovered by Martin of Northwestern, and the Wildcats come up with the football. 2.20 left to go in the first quarter. First and 10, Robinson tries the middle, but no, sir. Mike Wells knocks him down for a loss of three. Two plays later, third and 13. Sure, looking to pass. There's Larry Blue, and knocks him down after three yards to the negative. Two plays later, the Wildcats have to punt. Man in motion. Paul Burton hits it, and Harold Jasper comes up with the fair catch at the 48. Whoa, you can't hit a man who called for the fair catch. And Northwestern is penalized 15 yards for the personal foul. 
109 left to go first quarter. Burmeister with the win. Throws. Anthony Dean has it and gains five. Make it second and five. Ball at the Northwestern 32. Cedric Shaw gets the pitch. Cuts up inside the 30 and gains four. After a first down was picked up, it is at the 26. Cedric Shaw tries the left side, but he spills for a loss of three. As we come to the end of the first quarter, look at that wind. Northwestern three and Iowa nothing. Let's get back to work. Second quarter action now. Shaw on the reverse to Demo Odoms, and he's going to be in trouble. He loses nine. Make it third and 22 from the 38. Burmeister wants to throw. Pretty good protection. Now he runs, flips the ball out to Cliff King, but he only gains seven. Fourth and 15 from the 31. Nick Gallery comes in, hits a seven-yard punt into that 35 mile an hour win. 13-25 left to go in the first quarter. Let's go to second and eight for Northwestern. Lundy tries the middle and he gains 13. First and 10 from the 39. Lundy tries the left side, but brilliant defensive end play by Mike Wells. Loss of one. Second and 11 from the 38. Sure wants to throw. Good time, now he scrambles, gets away, lets it go. It's complete to Beasley. He's down the sideline, finally knocked down by Mike Daly and Matt Hilliard after a gain of 40. Two plays later, second and six from the 18. Lundy tries the right side, cuts back up the middle and gains five before Parker Wildman knocks him down. Two plays later, first and 10 from the 11. Lundy, right side, finds a big hole and gains five. Two plays later, third and four from the 15. Sure, misses the handoff, keeps himself and loses three. Mike Wells, who had double figure tackles on the day on the stop. Northwestern goes for the field goal. It is good, and they're up by a six pack. Northwestern with the wind at their back. Leahy kicks off. Harold Jasper takes it. And he comes up the middle over the 25-yard line. 7.43 left to go in the first half. This is second and nine. Ryan Terry tries the left side, but he loses one. Third and eight from the 26. Burmeister throws to Antilla, but it only gains five. And again, that brings up Nick Gallery and the punting unit. Gallery hits it. Pretty good punt into the wind and gets a nice roll when it stops. It will have covered 42 yards. 5.33 left to go first half. First and 10 from the 28. Sure. Throws to Gissendander. And he gains 12 for the first down. First and 10 from the 40. Lundy gets the handoff. Good hole. And he gains six out over the 45. Two plays later. First and 10. Sure. Wants to throw, ball is over his head and picked off by Marquise Porter. He brings it back down the right side inside the 45, close to the 40, a return of 31 yards. 4.05 left to go, first half, first and 10 from the 41. Terry tries the right side and oh my is it tough. He picks up two. Let's go to third and eight from the 39. Burmeister wants to throw, finds Harold Jasper, makes a move and picks up 18 and a first from the 21. Burmeister again wants to throw to the left sidelines and complete. Good for a gain of nine again to Jasper. On the next play, Cliff King gets the call. He moves deeper into Wildcat territory. Let's go to second down. Ryan Terry gets the call and he bulls his way into the end zone. Want you to take a look at the convoy that was set up in front of Ryan Terry as he bulls his way in for the score. Six plays, 41 yards following the interception. Todd Romano puts his toe to the ball. It is blocked. Ball bounces free and is eventually killed. So with 2.27 left in the first half, it is Northwestern six and Iowa six. Hawkeyes have to kick into that win. They decide to kick under it. It comes down to McGrew and the Wildcats have the football. Let's go to first and 10. Sure wants to throw. 
under heavy pressure, <laughs> ugly pass, but uh, it gets completed to Graham and he gains 23. First and 10, ball at the 44. Lundy takes the ball, cuts right, big hole goes to the sideline and picks up five. Two plays later, third and five, ball at the 39 yard line. Sure wants to throw. Ball is broken up by Pat Boone on a great defensive play. Fourth and five, ball still resting at the 49. Burton on to punt. He hits it 39 yards high and deep and into the end zone. 157 left to go in the first half. Let's go to second and 10, ball at the 20 yard line. Burmeister on the audible. With the fake, escapes a little pressure. Now throws, there is Scott Slutsker, and the big guy picks up 17. First and 10 from the 37. Burmeister again wants to throw, finds Big Scott, and he picks up five. That brings up second and five from the 42. Burmeister fighting the clock in the wind, steps up, throws, ball is complete. Nice catch to Anthony Dean as he gains 22. First and 10 from the 36. Burmeister, nice protection, throws complete to Jasper, picks up 15. First and 10, ball at the inside the five yard line, given away inside and short yardage as Northwestern continues to fight on the next play. Ball faked up the middle, rolls right, does Burmeister, finds Slutsker, touchdown. What a big drive this was. Here's a replay, nice fake into the middle, almost faked our cameraman out, but Slutsker for the touchdown. That was a 80-yard drive. It took a minute and 22, outstanding before the half with the extra point. Iowa 13 and Northwestern 6 into the locker room. Welcome back to second half action. And as you can see, the wind has not subsided. Northwestern decides to take the football. Iowa kicks with the wind and it will be a touchback. Let's go to second and eight on Northwestern's opening drive. Ball at the 22. Lundy gets the call, nice hole, and he picks up six out over the 25 yard line. Third and two, ball at the 28. Lundy tries the left side, but it is great defense by Scott Sether and Jason Olesnik. He only gets one, so that brings up a fourth down. Burton has to punt, and Harold Jasper fair catches after a 39-yard kick. 13-29 left to go in the third quarter. This is second and 10. Cedric Shaw up the middle, and he only gains three. Third and seven from the 35. Burmeister. Wants to throw, outstanding blocking. Now he runs, and he picks up seven and a first down. By the way, Burmeister was banged up on the play, so I'd had to come in. He hands off to Cliff King straight up the middle, and King gains 14. First and 10, ball at the 44. King again tries the left side. The big guy gets 12. Two plays later, second and six. Burmeister back in there. He wants to throw. He does. It's complete to Harold Jasper as he picks up 11. First and 10, ball at the 17, big hole, Cliff King. First and goal, ball resting at the six. If you have a good thing going, stay with it. So King gets the call one more time. He's close as he picks up five more. Second and goal, ball at the one. King gets the call, looks like he may have been in. They ruled him down. Third and goal, Burmeister jumps in, knocks back, but it is a score for Iowa. Terrific 68-yard drive in 11 plays. It took four minutes, 20 seconds, and with the extra point by Romano, Iowa 20 and Northwestern 6. 9.09 left to go in the third quarter. Brian Hurley again kicks the ball, and again it shoots out of the end zone, and so Northwestern will take over at their own 20. First and 10. Sure wants to throw. 
Finds Giskendainer, and he picks up 15. Three plays later, third and six. Sure, again wants to throw. Ball is tipped, but it's complete to Graham. Iowa picks up the personal foul, and so Northwestern has the first down. Ball resting at the 40. Sure wants to throw. Now facing big pressure. Now sacked by Bickham and loses seven. Two plays later, third and 15. Ball at the 45. Winship wants to throw. Now under pressure. Escapes another tackle. Keeps his balance. Throws. Ball is incomplete. But the defense brings up a punting situation for Northwestern. Burton again hits it. 44-yard punt, and look at this, killed at the one-yard line. Thought if you took the ball in the end zone that it came out to the 20. However, Iowa took it over at the one foot. They tried to barge it out on first down. On third down, they barely get it out to the two, and eventually they have to punt. Nick Gallery kicks it low with the win. Big kick. Iowa coming down on defense, and they hold them. Northwestern, illegal use of the hands, and so they mark off 10 more yards, and they start over on the 44. Lundy tries the left side, but Big Mike Wells again, tremendous defensive play, stops him for no gain. Third and 11, ball at the 43. Sure, in big trouble, Larry Blue knocks him down for a loss of 10. So combine the punt and the great defense and Northwestern has to kick and Iowa is gonna come up with pretty good field position on their part as Harold Jasper takes the ball. On the very first play, Cliff King goes for nine tough yards. What a game he had. Second and one ball at the 40. Burmeister wants to throw lots of time. Ball is intercepted by Martin at the Northwestern 46. 157 left to go in the third quarter. Let's go to second and seven. Lundy tries the left side and he gains 10. First and 10, ball resting at the Iowa 41 yard line. Lundy gets the call, cuts back. He's free and picks up 11. At the end of three quarters, it is Iowa 20 and Northwestern six. Let's go to third and one, ball at the 21. Lundy the left side, the big guy gets nine. Replays later, third and one. Iowa's defense holds Northwestern out, but on fourth and goal, Lundy gets the call and gets the touchdown just barely. 54 yard drive, it took four minutes and nine seconds. And with the extra point, it is Iowa 20 and Northwestern 13. Northwestern now with that wind as Leahy kicks it. This is Ryan Terry at the six, and he brings it back close to the 30. First and 10 from that point. Terry gets the call, finally has a little crease, keeps his balance and gains 11. First and 10 from the 41. King tries the middle, but oh my, back to that again. He loses three. Two plays later, third and 13 from the 38. Burmeister wants to throw, steps up, throws to Scott Slutsker, but he only gains two when all is said and done. That brings up a punting situation. Nick Gallery into that gale, and look at this. The punt hits at the 25. It rolls and rolls at the five. And now watch this. How is this ball rolling into the wind? It's going to be down at the half yard line. Northwestern on first down. Sure tries the middle, picks up one. On third down after a gain of two, Lundy tries the right side, but it is no gain as Hilliard and Sether bring him down. That brings up a punting situation. Burton hits it from his own end zone. Jasper takes it at the 40, makes a couple of moves and puts Iowa in good field position. 8.47 left to go, first and 10. Cedric Shaw tries the right side, but he loses five. Two plays later, third and 11. 
Burmeister. Behind good protection. Throws. Scott Slutsker there inside the 20 and pulls inside the 15. Two plays later, second and nine from the 13. Burmeister wants to throw, but now he's in trouble. Knocked down for a loss of six. Make it third and 15. Ball at the 19-yard line. Burmeister wants to throw. Ball is incomplete. That brings up fourth down. Todd Romano into the win. 37-yard field goal is good. Iowa goes up 23 to 6. Northwestern added a late touchdown, and the Hawkeyes win their third game in a row, hoping to close out against Minnesota with a winning record and really finish strong. with the fighting character of the Northwestern football team. They had a lot of chances to surrender today and they didn't do it. And uh, came back there to last and threw the ball right in between three of our defenders and got a touchdown and made the game interesting. I guess that's because USA Today had us two point favorites and uh, they had to close the gap. I don't, know how, I don't know how those bookies can do that, but uh, they're pretty accurate most of the time. I guess that's the reason they can keep their jobs. But anyway, I was extremely proud of our football team. We did a lot of things uh, very good at times. And obviously, we got off to a slow start from an offensive standpoint between a win. Uh, the win was a big factor and the Northwestern defense. They, they really had us uh, confused early. We left uh, quite a few offensive players at home that couldn't make the trip with us. And some of the guys out there weren't really real healthy. And as a combination of a good defense and us not executing, uh, made the game pretty interesting. But I think Mike Wells got everyone fired up. Uh, he uh, finally got the official's attention that he's being tackled or held on pass rush, and when they didn't call it, uh, he, he don't want to get Mike Wells mad, but he, he got everyone fired up. And then when the offense went in, uh, they made a beautiful drive down the field, executed extremely well, and scored the touchdown, uh, Burmeister to Slusker, right at the end of the first half to give us a, a lot of momentum. and. Uh, the lead. Uh, the second half, we played it pretty close uh, with a win again. Uh, uh, Romano hit probably his best field goal of the year. I think it had gone through another 20 or 30 yards out. He really tagged that thing into a 35 mile an hour win. And uh, I think he even surprised himself. But that gave us a cushion, raising it to a 10 point spread. And after that, it was just a matter of trying to run every second off the clock that we could and uh, try to contain uh, Northwestern. So, uh, Gallery, our freshman punter, had a good day punting the ball, uh, getting it off in a hurry so we didn't get it blocked, kicking away from uh, uh, the punt return guy. Little number two is extremely dangerous, and we played our uh, typical punt coverage, kickoff coverage game where we let the other team run about halfway up the field before we tackle them. Uh, that's not anything new to us. If you got any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer. How important was the punt down to the one yard line against the wind and the last roll out of it? I couldn't figure out why I kept rolling towards their goal line and our guys, you know, they, they let it roll and roll. But then I couldn't figure out on the opening kickoff why they won uh, the flip and gave us the wind and the ball. Not, well, good academic school. We'll take it. <laughs> Did you expect Williams to play? Uh, we had heard that he had bruised ribs or even possibly uh, cracked ribs, but we knew number two uh, in the last drive against Michigan State last week did a wonderful job moving the ball down the field through a touchdown pass. So uh, I told the team we didn't know if, if Lynn Williams could possibly play, he would play because he's a great competitor. So when he didn't start the game, we knew he had to be wounded pretty good. Did that change your defense any, Hayden? Not having an active quarterback back there. No, we didn't, we didn't change a thing. We, we really didn't. Uh, we, the other quarterback's going to run the same offense, and uh, uh, maybe he didn't look for number two quite as much as, as Lynn Williams looks for him. But other than that, I didn't see uh, too much of a change. Uh, Williams, obviously, is a better scrambler than the other kid. We, we adjusted a little bit for that. But when we did, we gave him too much time to throw the ball. If the kid gets enough time to throw the ball, he's very accurate. 
Coach, can you talk about the final drive before the first half ended with Burmeister directing that? Yeah, that, uh, that was a no-huddle offense, and uh, it didn't give Northwestern a lot of time to do all of the stunning and blitzing that they'd been doing where we couldn't move the ball. And uh, throwing into the wind, I thought Paul and the receivers did a great job. Plus, the offensive line gave him time to throw the ball. That, uh, that was the key to the game, really, that drive right before the half. How does it feel to be back at 500? You know, as a coach, you don't pay any attention to that. You, you just go out and work around the clock and, and try to do the best you can, and whatever happens is going to happen. So you don't, you get as old as me, you're immune to the one loss record and, and all that junk. You know, it makes good copy, but you just go out and fight for everything you got for every game and try to get your players to do the same thing. Considering so. that junk age, you've won three in a row. If you beat Minnesota, it'll be four in a row in a winning season. Do you have any hopes of going to a uh, I guess we'll have to wait till after the Minnesota game to see if, if there's anything uh, available. The college football is so screwed up today because there's so much parity. There's so many teams in the various conferences that don't have real good one-loss records. They're going to be eliminated because they don't have six victories against Division One teams. And uh, but uh, you know, normally a six-five team goes to a bowl game, but. Uh, you know, everything we do at Iowa this year, uh, we have to fight like it's the end of the world. I mean, we don't, we do not do anything easy. We do not do anything pretty. And uh, if we'd have listened to a lot of people, we wouldn't have won any games at all after we lost five in a row. That's the first time in my life I'd ever lost five in a row. What do you think the mood of the team is heading into this last game where you've got a lot on the line for Fry's 200th win and a bowl game and everything else? Um, I, would, I, would, I would say, um, you know, we've got a lot of morale going into this game, and I'm, I'm sure everybody's thinking revenge, you know. We're, we're in the same position we were last year, and uh, Minnesota put us out last year, and so, you know, and they have a chance to put us out this year, and we don't want to let them do that. Do you feel like you guys really have a chance to salvage the season after it was looking pretty bleak for a while? Uh, definitely. I think I feel real good about it. Um, we have four games left, and uh, we won three of them so far. And I'll, I'll, even if uh, win or lose, I think I'll be happy because we finished strong and we finished with a lot of uh, having a lot of fun. But if you stay in coaching long enough, good things and bad things are going to happen. And uh, everybody that follows the Hawks knows this is not a real good football team, and but. We've shown a lot of character in recent weeks, starting with the Michigan State game. Even though we lost, we played real good football and played hard. We played real hard against Indiana and lost by two field goals. And uh, we, we've shown spurts of being a good football team, but you, you can't believe, unless you're a player or coach, the mental stress that players go through when you used to winning and you're not winning. That is, I can imagine Gary Moeller at Michigan and what he went through losing four ball games. It, it's, it's a tremendous stress. And uh, now we got a chance to have a winning season and uh, bring old Florida Rosedale back.